Hi friends, welcome back to our series of sessions on sensors and transducers. Today we'll discuss about resistance temperature detectors. Basically resistance thermometers, popularly called as resistance temperature detectors, are basically sensors used to measure temperature. Many RTD elements consist of a length of fine wire wrapped around a heat resistant ceramic or glass core but other constructions are also used. The RTD wire is a pure material, typically of platinum, nickel, or copper. The material has an accurate resistance temperature relationship, which is used to provide an indication of temperature. As RTD elements are fragile, they are often housed in a protective probes. RTDs which have higher accuracy and repeatability are slowly replacing thermocouples in industrial applications for less than 600 degrees centigrade. The resistance temperature relationship of metals is the primary criteria for common RTD sensing elements, which have a repeatable resistance versus temperature relationship and operating temperature range. As the resistance versus relation, temperature relationship is defined, the amount of resistance change of the sensor per degree of temperature change. Nickel elements have a temperature range because the amount of change in resistance per degree of change in temperature becomes very non-linear at temperatures over 300 degrees centigrade. Copper has a very linear resistance temperature relationship. However, copper oxidizes at moderate temperatures and cannot be used over 150 degrees centigrade. Platinum is a noble metal and has the most stable resistance temperature relationship over largest temperature range. The significant characteristic of metals used as resistive element is the linear approximation of the resistance versus temperature relationship between zero and 100 degrees centigrade. In the calibration to characterize the resistance versus temperature relationship of any RTD over a temperature range, that represents the planned range of use, calibration must be performed at temperatures other than zero degrees centigrade and 100 degrees centigrade. This is necessary to meet calibration requirements. Fixed point calibration is used for the highest accuracy calibrations by national metrology laboratories. Using triple point, freezing point, or melting point of pure substances such as water, zinc, tin, and argon to generate a known repeatable temperature. Fixed point calibration provide extremely accurate calibrations within plus or minus 0 0.01 degrees centigrade. A common fixed point calibration method is for industrial grade probes is the ice bath. The equipment is inexpensive, easy to use, and can accommodate several sensors at once. Next one is the comparison calibration, which is commonly used with secondary standard platinum resistance thermometers and industrial RTDs. The thermometers being calibrated are compared to calibrated th thermometers by means of a bath whose temperature is uniformly stable. Unlike fixed bath calibration, comparisons can be made at any temperatures between minus 100 degrees centigrade to 500 degrees centigrade. This method might be more cost effective since several sensors can be calibrated simultaneously with automated equipment. These electrically heated and well stirred baths use silicon oils and molten salts as the medium for the various calibration temperatures. And if you see the elements, types of elements, the three main categories of RTD sensors are thin film, wire wood, and coiled elements. While these types are the ones most widely used in industry, other more exotic shapes are used. For example, carbon resistors, which are used at ultra low temperatures, that's minus 273 degrees centigrade to minus 173 degrees centigrade. Carbon resistor elements are cheap and widely used. They have very good reproducible results at low temperatures. They are the most reliable over extremely wide range of temperatures. They generally do not suffer from significant hysteresis or strain gauge effects. Then we have strain free elements which use a wire coil minimally supported within a sealed housing filled with an inert gas. These sensors work up to 961 degrees centigrade. They consist of platinum wire loosely coiled over a support structure. So the element is free to expand and contract with temperature. 
Then we have thin film elements, which have a sensing element that is formed by depositing a very thin layer of resistive material, normally platinum on a ceramic substrate. This layer is usually just one to 10 nanomillimeters thick. This film is then coated with an epoxy or glass that helps protect the deposited film and also acts as a strain relief for the external lead wires. Disadvantages of this type are that they are not as stable as thin wire wound or coiled counterparts. These elements work with temperatures to 300 degrees centigrade without further packaging, but can go up to 600 degrees centigrade when suitably encapsulated in glass or ceramic. Special high temperature RTD elements can be used even up to 900 degrees centigrade with the right encapsulation. Then we have wire wound elements, which can have greater accuracy, especially for wide temperature ranges. The coil di diameter provides a compromise between mechanical stability and allowing expansion of the wire to minimize strain and consequent drift. The sensing wire is wrapped around an insulating mandrel or core. The winding core can be round or flat, but must be an electrical insulator. The coefficient of thermal expansion of the winding core material is matched to the sensing wire to minimize any mechanical strain. The strain on the element wire will result in a thermal measurement error. The sensing wire is connected to a larger wire, usually referred to as the element lead or wire. The wire is selected to be compatible with the sensing wire so that the combination does not generate an EMF that would distort the thermal measurement. These elements work with the temperatures up to 660 degrees centigrade. Then we have coiled elements, which have largely replaced wire wound elements in industry. This design has a wire coil that can expand freely over temperature, held in place by some mechanical support, which lets the coil keep its shape. This strain feed design allows the sensing wire to expand and contract free of influence from other materials. The basis of the sensing element is a small coil of platinum sensing wire. This coil resembles a filament in an incandescent light bulb. The coil is inserted in the bores of the material mandrel and then packed with a very finely grounded ceramic powder, which permits the sensing wire to move while still remaining in thermal contact with the process. These elements work with temperatures up to 850 degrees centigrade. The most common devices used in industry have a nominal resistance of 100 ohms at zero degrees centigrade and are called PT-100 sensors. PT is the symbol for platinum, 100 for the resistance in ohms at 100 degrees centigrade, zero degrees centigrade. It is also possible to get PT-1000 sensors where 1000 is for the resistance in ohms at zero degrees centigrade. The sensitivity of a standard 100 ohm sensor is a nominal 0.385 ohms per degree centigrade. Then see the advantages. The advantages of a platinum resistance thermometers include high accuracy, low drift, wide operating range, and suitability for precision applications. They also have limitations as RTDs in industrial applications are rarely used above 660 degrees centigrade. At temperatures above 660 degrees centigrade, it becomes increasingly difficult to prevent the platinum from becoming contaminated by impurities from the metal sheath of the thermometer. Compared to thermistors, platinum RTDs are less sensitive to small temperature changes and have a small, slower response time. However, thermistors have a smaller temperature range and stability. If you see the construction of the RTD, we have the sheath, and this is the RTD sensing element. Then we have an RTD element leads. Then we have connection lead wires and then lead wire insulation. These elements nearly always require insulated leads attached, PVC, silicon rubber, or PTF, PTFE insulators are used at temperatures below 250 degrees centigrade. Above this, glass fiber or ceramic fiber are used. The measuring point, usually most of the leads require a housing or protective sleeve, often <clears throat> made of a metal alloy that is chemically inert to the process being monitored. Selecting the designing, selecting the selecting and designing protection sheath can require more care than the actual sensor, as the sheath must withstand chemical or 
physical attack and provide convenient attachment points. Then for wiring, the for signal conditioning, the Wheatstone bridge is the most convenient form of uh, using the simplest resistance thermometer configuration, which uses two wires. And that is the when you balance the bridge, all RTDs can be conveniently used in the measurement of temperature. So thank you for your time. All the best. <clears throat>